Um, today's theme really is rebuilding the housing creative sector, positioning of brand housing to the world. Um, politicians, policy makers, government, they always have nice and fancy big English to say simple things. I mean, he yeah, always said how to make housing cool and take it to the world. Right, Osme? Yeah, that would have worked. But you know, that wouldn't have cut it in the policy document to break it down. You need to explain all the legs. But that's really the idea. But most importantly, you know, arts and culture, sports and recreation has an ability to not just heal, to unlock quality and value out of a nation. I mean, you guys should know that. But if you don't, we'll try and break it down in the conversations we're going to have today. So let me not waste much time. Let me welcome, uh, on behalf of the department, to come and represent um, the HOD. I'm going to call on Mr. Boniface uh, Mazilazila. I think I forgot your title. Director in the department. Please join us in. Moloeni, I know it's winter and it's cold, but yeah, let us try to be warm. If it can't be from the outside, at least from the within, from the inside. My name is Boniface Mazelazela, Director responsible for Creative Industries in the department. I've been given a task on behalf of the acting head of the department, Mr. Vianne Bofu who have attended to an emergency that uh, we, he didn't foresee, but it's family related. So he sends his apologies, let me see, and to, to all the delegates present. Mine is, is, is to just say one word. Nam Keleki, you are welcomed, you are at home, your sweaters, and everything that is going to be deliberated here today, it is only for one purpose, to give an opportunity for government as policymakers to connect and to revive the sector. We all know where we come from. We know the challenges and the difficulties that the sector has, but we are convinced that with you working the path with us, with us working the path with you, we'll be able to contribute not only to the livelihoods as creatives, but also to the, our communities, to the economy. Because this thing always work in the form of a cycle. A creative that does work within the industry contributes to the economy by either employing someone, by selling something, you are able to ensure that the GDP of the province and of the country, and you know what comes after that? It means we have resources to respond to all the social ills and necessities that the country faces. So this day belongs to yourselves, where the experts, where people who have traveled the road, who will be able not to tell you from a theoretical perspective, but from what they've experienced, so that we know where we are today. We're in the correct path, and the cultural and creative industries, as one of the identified 10 sectors in the province, it's here to change the lives, not only of ourselves, but of those whom we care much about who are our citizens, our employees, and our consequences. Feel welcomed and be at home, be warm. This is a great day. We're all here to enjoy ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kolese, uh, Director of Creative Industry in the department. So please, uh, guys, you can follow the department's social media pages, and if you're going to be uh, sharing what we are discussing here, 
uh, food free as well to, to tag them. As I said, today's theme is rebuilding the Gauteng creative sector, positioning of brand Gauteng to the world. Um, the MEC is responsible for this department and she is joining us this um, afternoon, uh, Gauteng MEC of Sport, Art, Culture and Recreation, Honorable uh, Mbali Shope. She's going to be chatting to us to really uh, set the scene and share with us what the purpose of what this day uh, is all about. So please help me welcome her to address us. Sanmunan. Ninjani. Sanmunan. Yebu. Yebu. Thank you. That is much better. Sounds like the sector that I know. So we're having this session today, and the school of Uti, we must bring some experts in the different fields. Buzzles, a buzzles introducer before they come and speak. But we really want this session to be as interactive as possible. We want to hear what your views are about the work, the sectors that we service, but importantly also to bridge the gap between the government and the sector which I'm actually I'm going to the department yes yeah arts is the department of condolences. So it's which we don't do condolences. <laughs> so we don't we don't do that. It's not what we enjoy to do. We certainly don't like burying artists either. And I'm raising that because I think it's such an important aspect and it just shows where the sector is. You know, whenever artists pass away, whether it was individuals that were big in their space and they had done exceptionally well and so forth. But when they come to their last few days and government needs to bury them, it's not something that some we must celebrate. Especially when these are individuals that are prominent that have done exceptionally well. If you look at other industries, and those that are doing exceptionally well, if you look at the US and so forth, and you look at the sectors, the artists they can be able to sustain themselves far beyond the time that they've done the work. Our industry has not grown to that level. And of course, there's a lot of structural issues that are there, and those continue to be part of the engagement. We know that there's the issues around the bill for artists and so forth that is there. And that's a different topic altogether because that's sitting with the president. But it's important that these discussions inform what is supposed to go into protecting artists. But beyond that, it's also important that we meet with yourself so that you're able to tell us some of the challenges that you're having. Because there might be things that Tina Esma's began and they're critical to yourself. So we're in Gauteng, we're not like, we certainly don't think of ourselves as being like any other province. We're in the economic hub. So when we look at sports and arts, we don't look at it from just a point of entertainment or a point of development and it ends there. When we speak about socio-economic development, the economics, the business of sports and arts is what matters the most to us. This is our work with the economic hub. Our mandate is to make sure that we grow the economy and to make sure that Gauteng continues to be the economic hub. And that's why and how we posture ourselves is that every department needs to play its part. We were here at Soweto a few weeks ago when Oprimia was launching the Township Economic Act. Well, it was actually signing the bill um, into an act. And part of what we were speaking about today was that in all the work that the different departments are doing, we must be able to make sure we must be able to bring about economic participation in Malukshi. That's why I say Lan So if you look at the work that we do, because heritage is also part of the portfolio of work that we conduct, I'm a heritage is in switch. We don't look at them just from purely a historical and an emotive point of view. If you look at our most prominent heritage route, which is the one in Sevilagat, it's doing exceptionally well. And you can see that it's been able to revive the township economy. And this is what we're going to be replicating through the other parts of the province. If you think about Ishabdil, 
and the massacre that took place there, and we put on and so forth. We can mention them. So we are aligning all of these heritage routes so that there is economic beneficiation for the locality. And so that the arts and sports within the townships can be able to be revived. But we don't only want to lock you into our local markets. We also want to take you globally. I was saying to the panelists earlier, Abantabaneng don't like to be criticized. And I don't know how anybody wants to function in a manner where you're not criticized for something. Because you only better yourself by hearing and when people are positively critical towards you. So we're that type of department that is young made and we want to make sure that we're able to correct on the things that have been done wrong. So we want them to be as frank and we want these discussions to be as frank as possible because we want to position a Gauteng in a manner that it can be able to contest in the world. So we have a Mapiano that is coming out of this province. They're doing exceptionally well. They're not just the national sound. They are our continental sound and we want to make them a global sound. But we must be intentional in how we take them to the world. And government must play that role. So outside of the session, part of the sessions we will be doing is to meet with the different sectors and say, where do we plug in to make sure that we're able to make people these global brands we see them to be? Because we are Gauteng, we're not just any other province. So we want to stamp our mark and we want to make sure that because a lot of the artists gravitate to this province, when they gravitate here, there must be wealth that they're deriving. So a lot of people come here for economic opportunities, of course it's the economic hub, but there's also 70% of big businesses within this province. Your media is here and so forth. So from a location point of view, how then allows individuals to thrive and that's why we're able to attract from the length and the breadth of the country. But we don't just want people to only be or have a national footprint. We really want to make people to have a continental footprint and also to have a global footprint. So that's why we're saying that the individuals that are going to speak here represent different spheres of the creative industries. And these are individuals that are players in the different spaces. And we really just want this to be as informative as possible Nan in the world with Fonda because you could be at different levels. You might not be at the level that they're in, and you can be able to get some critical learnings from it. But essentially, what I'm driving through is that there's a space for everybody. Because the problems in the arts is not a lack of creativity, it's a lack of opportunity and market access. That's the problem summarized. And so, government must be able to assist in that regard. And that's why these engagements are so important to us and we don't want them to be talk shops. So when Osmic earlier was indicating that he's been through so many of these and they become so mundane because say a Puloma song and it becomes a talk shop and it doesn't become action orientated. So we want to see action out of this and I was saying to him, the directors are all here that need to be here. The chief directors here also and these are the people that must be able to implement. So that's why we, to make sure we see. Must say, so we don't just sit and communicate with ourselves for the sake of talking, because I'm sure all of you could be doing other things today, but you're here. So let's make it meaningful and make sure we're all able to get something out of it. So we're positioning the province. Um, we're looking into the business of sports and arts. So there's, of course, the developmental things that we do, which we'll always do for young kids and so forth. We've got our Wednesday Leads program. So we're bringing back sports and arts into schools because we appreciate that Tabandwana are in the situation that they're in. Teenage pregnancies, drug, alcohol abuse and so forth because there's nothing that's there to positively engage them during the times that they are unsupervised. So the kids who sit, they come back from a school in Ngabu 1 or 2 o'clock and their parents come back at around 5, 6, 7, depending on what time public transport can get them back. And we want to get those kids to be engaged in sports and arts. But beyond that, we'll also introduce them to the business of sports and arts so that they can see that there are opportunities within these areas. Because, see, as Abandang Bekhtubuti, from the homes that we come from, particularly black families, 
this sector is not taken seriously as it should be. It's still not seen as a career option or a career path. But through bringing back these Wednesday geeks and introducing kids to the different spheres that the opportunities are, whether it's from an administrative point of view or it's from a business point of view or it's from physically being in sports and arts, there's various avenues that are there. And we want to make sure that the kids have an opportunity to know the full basket of opportunities that are there. So we started at different levels, and this is one of the engagements that we have with yourselves, but we thought that it's important that you also have a sense of the other things that we are doing in other areas. But essentially, we want you to enjoy yourself. Um, be as frank, as open with us as possible. They will be taking notes, they will be taking your contacts, uh, where we need to immediately be able to follow up on some of the issues, but we want this to really be a fruitful engagement. So I didn't prepare something to say, because I always just think it's always better when you read the crowd and you're able to speak to what people want to hear. So, Nyabonga, Kamala Mumbai, thank you. Siabonga, MEC of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, Honorable Mbali in the province of Gauteng. So, um, the beauty of this uh, sector, the creative arts, is that uh, whatever natural talent you have, if you identify it early in your life and you build on it, uh, you know, it can get you out of a lot of trouble. It can also get you out of your own family challenges and change the trajectory of your story. So when you have natural talent, it doesn't matter whether your parents basim shemuvi or a chicken farm or a selection park or it is this extension. Mazali Pola, Ugoazi, Ziakifa. Maung, I was Mawazu, Kulumim Sagazueni, Buzwagala, Ziakifa Baba. No one can stop you. If you can act, you act. Shemu Vim versus Ditliff extension, Azish. And it's just like when you don't have it. No more, I will wait to extension. No more, I will not be able to get a job. I will not be able to get a job. I will not be able to And then, no more, I will not be able to get a new job. I will not be able to get a job. You must take something there. Because La Pena, New York, they have 50,000 Taniquas who have nice American accents and can sing like Whitney Houston every day. So when I said my chance, we are a pimp in. We come to Zongen and then. But look, sorry darling, there's a girl from Bay Bay who can sing better than you. There's a way of we are. That's the beauty of talent. Um, but there's discipline that's required. Um, how you can benefit from all these policies and there's organizations like SAMRO and the South African Revenue Services who are also joining us here. So you can exactly understand uh, how the ecosystem works. So, um, I have a panelist with me. Uh, these are a lady and a few gentlemen who know their story in the different fields uh, that they operate in. And we are going to try and really have a conversation in regards to how do we rebuild the Houghton cultural and creative sector, positioning uh, of brand counting uh, to the world. So that's a conversation that we're going to try and have. So I, I think, before I go to my panelists, and if they allow me, can I ask the guys from Samuel and Sars to just do a little gaba gaba of who they are and, you know, how do they connect with the sector? They want to learn to you but you pay you all the isars. This is not legal anymore. It's a serious matter. It's because the kids, those ones on Wednesdays, that are going to be part of the sports thing, they don't tell them 
So muscle sign and a pirate or a swallows who finally up at a lady's head. Who comes from Kelemale Yak? Yabo? Then the woman am a problem because we the young girl are so faint. So the color is starting to explain with how does it connect. And then we're also going to have um, Samro. Who else do we have? Oh, we have a comedian. Okay, I wanted to get that. Okay, that's fine. All right, so let's get the comedian first. Sorry, sir. Let's get the comedian to come through and give us, uh, Isaac Gamble to come and give us some comedy and then we'll get to the, uh, sorry, sorry, bro, Isaac. Ask his name? Yeah, sorry. I can't join him. Now for him, by the seat. So, so I got. No better than my talk. So, so. Yeah. Penelope. Let's give Penny a hand. Let's give Penny a hand. Yeah, I love you so much. So much. Um, I mean, I fell in love with this town, uh, the whole township from 2010. I just love the confidence here to Bala. People here, by force, like they do anything to get a connection either way. 2010, I came back to the country in my point. Yeah, I think I came to my point when it was 2010 with my ex-girlfriend who was... So I love the confidence, I'm a teacher while you. So we walk into the shop with Fabian, and she says to me, Chérie, and I say, oui. She says, voulez-vous avoir le buisson blanc ou noir? She says, no, c'est très bien, j'ai demandé les souliers. She says, quel mot? She says, j'ai demandé Yamamoto, Ray Kawakubo. I was so disembarrassed. So I'm thinking, how much is that? I mean, I know she's, she's, she's half Japanese, half French, they can't hear her. As a lot of the hip hop, it will enjoy it. Bitola Hokima. The Hopelon Petit de Motaha. The Copela Yombi. Say Petit Yombi. I'm like, these guys, they actually think, by a force, they think French. It's an accent, not a language. You know, but our country is in, a, is in a crisis. I mean, I'm an artist, but I keep it on the ground more than anything. And if you're an artist, you can't fake it till you make it, because you won't get anywhere. Look at our country, we just had floods now, um, a case of that. And the rich housewives of Devon couldn't donate a cent. That's a sign. I was born to Myanmar and lie and say you're a philanthropist. Do you know what a philanthropist is? We have not been rich even for over a century as black people. And then we have people who lie and say they're philanthropists. A philanthropist is someone who doesn't know or doesn't have broke cousins. <laughs> That's when we talk about rich guys, man. No, not Elon Musk. I'm talking about my cousin at Post North. We're talking about rich guys. You know, we talk about um, David de Rothschild. We talk about, um, I mean, a, lo a, lo a lot of guys, Shimon Perez. Those are guys who are really rich. I was with him to me, I'm not a philanthropist, but I go Facebook, Kupala, where can I donate clothes? You lying. You don't know where to find black people in South Africa. Here in Kinu, actually, in Pasha Pants. Now, they were exposed, the rich housewives, and you can't fake being rich from to me, because if you still open yoga to quote this value, that's a sign right there. I want to be rich, I want to be rich, and I want this value. And you can't even fake being an artist to reach, but the diseases of the they show. You can't say when you're alleged you're not mad. Where, where do you find it? <laughs> Who's the artist to come among it? I have an alleged. Can't you have any cheetah? You don't have a period. Cheetah who's go away. Rich people suffer from real things. Parkinson's, mitochondria, Alzheimer's. This one is two tears, my Russia. What do you do when you're out? When you're in some name, my Russia, I'm cooking. When it's two tears, you finish, it just ends there. So, the arts and culture is in crisis. The country is in crisis. I'm not guess. I'll be honest. I know people won't, won't expect it. He probably made guess when we allowed Shangan music to circulate. <laughs> there was no blood shedding all my life. But the time I about it, it's democracy. One game with Thomas Chowd. There's no way you can play Shangan music on an African tank, number one. Or Rusali Town Housing. The unit will go off now. The music will be more I used to see a half of the petrol here on my mind. 
And what I like is the loyalty that people have got to the artists. Thomas Chowk is a millionaire, but he's never opened his mouth. But the Tsonga people still buy music. And that cannot happen. I got some law. She come here, let's not walk us from here. Oh, so my cocos, my tongue, my cocos. We found a buffer as a move. She told me to go on in my dollar. So that, that's the support we all need as artists. Guys, in mind, I, I tell people a lot. I made my first 100k in high school. Money is not fancy. If money was fancy, you guys went to my gold note and my pearls or Swarovski crystals. Money doesn't have a look. Today we're suffering from people who love to Gucci and think that's money. And then people who still lie and say, oh, Bill Gates doesn't wear expensive clothes. No, they wear expensive clothes that black people don't know. They wear Yves Saint Laurent, they wear Brioni. Uh, it's not about buying cars. I mean, I'm an artist. I'm close to making money, but I'm not chasing cars. money, money, took islands where I'm going to What's the first shit I want to do with money? I don't have to prove myself and buy Gucci's and Bentley's. Uncle to tell them, you know how long they show us we're not nothing. We are nothing. They are dog black kids. Now from here we often age with two billion pounds. And say, I need a child. And they say, which one, Saya? Here is Jabu, is he peeing it? No. And come along, I want that one. Are you very sure? In touch with that, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to cut this. Is straight. We need to make money for a Monday. One minute I move on in. I should be through the apple. And then you know what I'll do. You know, she's a supermarket unattended. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a brunette right here. He's got blue eyes. And uh, please kindly attend to the child. We're saying, wait a minute. I'm saying, mm hmm. I got it. But why are you intimidating your child? It because it's my child, but you are lying. <laughs> and then I prove it. Because the way we speak English, it shows that we spoke it through reading. We never spoke English naturally. And the only reason why we were told us to speak English was for a sense of direction and nothing else. Then I prove it with Niti. Ask the child the name and say name. You know, I really want to show that they spoke English for, because it's theirs. They'll say things like, um, my name is Keegan, and my dad is a professional person. What is your name? My name is Tadiso Kampu. I live at 408 Tama Street. My father is Isaac. My mother is Mary. She's wearing a red dress. Then they could see Utum Nyam. But the problem we have, everyone is throwing slimes, dropping 16s and 32. No one is dropping money. You need to drop money for your funeral. Because and be a rapper and be buried by a rich uncle. I experienced that with a friend of mine. A rapper, tight rapper, on my job one month. You know when you're rich, when you're black, you've got a rich uncle, the poor one, the junk one, and the one on my on my girlfriend the money. The saddest part about not saving money for your last day is that you won't decide on what money need. A rich man decides when he wants to be buried. He will say, bury me on a Monday. They won't make an excuse. But no, I'm not my big saying. That's a sign you don't have. And my back my back my back overall, but you from savings now, you You can't be an artist and not work. So a friend of mine, my back 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 um, again, the good Reuven, well, I buy my first band and the first born in Chile financially. I was so protected by that nigga again for money called Gumama. I said to go on channel, so they give a bit of rap, I get them fine, but he couldn't do anything, go on back, go on, and I pin them dark. Um, and this is one thing I couldn't have gone to this. So he actually ever got the Swiss time piece, the oyster perpetual, rose gold, e Rolex day, just young, he got that in half past one. Um, was so protected. I got never get can't for money call my mama to come channel so legally because can't see a karate am can't get for money mate rate four point two quarter quarter. If you come in my mama la beka when this shopping is like a buy a go put no brat no brioni. And the tata DJ or XJR and we are now a hazard. And the clan we can lose control on British cars. Both again that sugar get that in the figure up by Middlelands. 
of ceramic as a Czechoslovakia. Is that any fault in our So the C Fetina, I want to have any money, see supplements and vitamins. And um I said you kill a big car and when you want to clutter for big cool. Uh so kill on the mobile. And what we told the coffee night for the bang a chang and some cool egg. If you don't get in a gas, even in the gas uh up to the bang and a motor band in a pie up. UV class as in being is as I'm zone, you could go ultraviolet, now the air blue, each and every seat in the potilia, my calendar, and all of it. And this is my main about Shamba is to keep a yoni, if I be 10%, yeah, there's about 8.4 with Shamba and Susanna Mad. And the Mutter Catafopic Kaku, as is with Chela Pekai, which I go on a boss of a drive to get off money plates and name care. And my name is Yach Kakati, Swiss time piece, oyster perpetual day just. Rolex Young, it's one of the family. My name is Isaac. Thank you very much. Dear Blela, Isaac Gambu, and Sub Anza Gamba, the Kalavan Banda, the philanthropist. The Vilegal, I don't know that is good, but who tell him that I think I figured Lele by a philanthropist. Uh, as an artist. Thank you so much for that. Give him a round of applause once again, guys. Uh, I had forgotten, guys, you know, part of being an MC in 2022, your other side job is being a sanitizer. So I almost forgot that part. I apologize, all protocols observed. Of, uh, we're still in COVID, even though we're coming out of it. Eh? So I'm going to move on to what I had uh, pronounced before. I'm going to call on the gentleman from SARS. Multitasking. Uh, to come through and talk to us about, um, you know, how creative industries and sports link to the monies of the South African Revenue Services Treasury. Sir, please come through. Thank you, Program Director. Uh, I'd like to greet the MECs, the panelists, and all of us on the floor. My name is Umsizi Wela. I'm from South African Revenue Services, based uh, here in Soweto, in Orlando East Power Park. Uh, okay, I understand as artists, uh, we tend to sign big contracts, but we always forget first things first that we have to pay what is due, we have to be compliant. So I'll briefly talk about the issue of compliance. We have made our systems easier, and it's easier to reach. You can even try it now while you are having your smartphones. So the registration, first of all, once you come into the entertainment industry, the first thing that you have to do is to be tax compliant, meaning that you have to register for tax. You can do this within three minutes on your smartphone. This, if you go to our website, www.sars.gov.za or www.sarsefiling.co.za, you'll immediately register for your tax. You do no longer need to go and queue at our offices. We have made things easier. On our systems as well, uh, there is a guide whereby we can automatically help you to e file So whatever the questions that you might be having, so we, can, we do have answers of such questions immediately. What we also introduce is that if you maybe want to uh, talk to one of our consultants at our contact center, then you can ask for a call back whereby we call you back and guide you through. We want to make things easier for you to comply. Why is it important for all of us to comply? As SARS, uh, our duty is to collect tax on behalf of the state, whereby then the, the budget is being given to us by the Treasury to collect, like uh, last 
with the last financial aid, we collected 1.6 trillion, but it's still not enough for the government to run the country. We still need more. So it's important for all of us to comply so that the government can be able to sponsor programs like this to ensure that they take care of us as artists in, within the industry. If you need to visit us in our offices, unfortunately you need, now need to make an appointment because we have actually uh, automated our systems. Everything is being done online now. Like uh, we are about to start with our tax season, which is one of the biggest ones, like the filing season from the 1st of July. So many of you will get automated um, tax returns, like SMSs that know uh, you do not have to come and file. We know exactly how much you have made. This is what you're supposed to pay, or this is how much you're supposed to get back. It is important that we as artists, we comply. Because we always read on the news, one of our colleagues has been caught at owing the taxman, this and this and that. It's important that from the beginning, you comply. If you, get a, you enter into a big contract, you get whatever millions that you get, the first thing before you think of spending the money is to ask, your, you ask the taxman how much it is that I'm supposed to pay for tax before I can decide to spend not to spend and think about tax afterwards. Because honestly, it's part of the law that SARS will tries to make it easier for you to comply. They want you, we want you to be on business as SARS. Asan Bona Ama business in a savings. So it's the time that would send it will be easier for when to comply. So if you are an artist, you are not full-time employed like me. I'm employed full-time. So it's a full-time employment. Before I get paid, they deduct tax. But what happens in the case that you sign a contract? No one deducts tax on your behalf. So what is supposed to happen? You are not on the full-time employment or the standard employment. You act as an independent contractor. So the tax is actually calculated from 25%. But in my case, they use their tax tables because I'm working full time. So it's important for us, but we do not tax you if you have expenses on your cross, like the money that you've actually received, which is actually in your pocket now. We consider the expenses that you had to incur in order for you to make the amount that you have made. But it has to be business expenses, not the school fees for kids, not the groceries. That comes after, not the entertainment at you know, other venues, etc., etc. So it's important for us as artists to comply because it is against the law if you do not comply. If you are caught not complying, the penalty is non-negotiable 200 percent. Non-negotiable. So we have made it easier as SARS because Unlike uh, us, I only started to know about tax when I started working. But now we go to schools. We go everywhere like to ensure that we create awareness when it comes to tax compliance. So it is important that you register. But if you decide maybe to open up a company as an artist, then as soon as you get the certificate, they send the information immediately to SARS. But what we want you to do is for you to give us your updated details. Immediately you get a text number. You no longer have to apply for a text number. Then you register on e-filing or you make an appointment. You come and give us your updated details so that we can know if it's company, this often PTY LTD, we know who to contact if we need anything. It is also important that even if you have registered a company, but you are not lucky. It hasn't been lucky to get work, but you still come to us for compliance. To us, we come from zero. We never come from one right. So it, zero, nothing, that you have made nothing, it means you have made nothing. You are not evading to pay tax. You comply that, no, I wasn't lucky during this financial year. I've made nothing. My company got no business. 
But immediately when you start to make, it be, uh, to make money, from if you are a small business, from one rand until 86,900 per annum, you do not pay tax, but it's us that have to decide, not on your own. You come to us that we only made profit of uh, 76,000. It serves that will tell you that you do not have to pay tax. So if you don't come to us, we see you as someone who's evading to pay tax. So this is just an overview on how uh, we are actually working. In our office in Soweto, we do have workshops whereby we, we also, if you <coughs> like to invite us, if you are a group, maybe of artists or business people, we also come to assist you, take you through uh, when it comes to tax matters. But we, have made, we are making sure that we make everything simpler. Even the wordings of the return forms are on all 11 official languages in South Africa. I thank you. Um, maybe there might be, if you can allow me, Program Director, one or two questions that uh, you'd like to ask. Um, Okay, can I answer that immediately? We are in Krisani Road, Power Park, uh, just behind the uh, KFC and the Shell Garage. The center is named as Asambe, Asambe Center. The, yeah, just, just behind uh, the Shell Garage, Krisani and Dynamo Road in Power Park, Olano East. Thank you. Very friendly offices and they are top notch. But we are a non-profit making organization. But you told me that's a profit. It's just a way of trying to avoid to pay tax. So he exempt unit here is based in Hatfield, but as in Shilonji, everything is online. So there is a form that you complete, it is EI21, exempt uh, institute 21, that you complete and you upload the form so that young kid do to see online. But then, still, we have to be the ones to tell you that you qualify to be a non-profit organization. But it doesn't mean that you do not have to comply. Still, you have to uh, comply, like capture all your financial statements all the email and for that particular financial year, including the receipts and invoices and everything. Then ESARS will automatically say that it's uh, your tax liability, it's nil, meaning that you do not have to pay SARS. But uh, to get that form to download, go to www.sars.gov.za. It exempts institution form. Uh, there is a guide, there's everything there. Everything we, is online now. We are yeah, in the fourth industrial uh, revolution, as they always say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Nyabonga. Uh, my brother is still available in the room, so if you guys have questions, you can uh, interact with him. So quickly, I'm going to get the gentleman from Samro. I was told... Uh, He's in the room as well. I don't know if he's still with us. Uh, and the name I have is Andy Lem Zwakali, uh, who's going to come and share with us in regards to 
some room. Then we're going to get into the panelists. Quick, quick. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'll keep this very brief. Uh, hello, everyone in the back. So, yeah, my name is Andy Lemzwagali. I'm a junior manager, uh, member services at SAMRU. So we are responsible for dealing with whatever queries that our members should have, whether it be composers or it be authors or publishers. So what is SAMRU? SAMRU, Southern African Music Rights. So we are the ones who manage the performance rights of an artist if your music is used in a public space, whether it be uh, radio, TV, streaming sites or pubs like a Sofeng. So how it would work is a place like the Sofeng would have to then pay a license fee so that they would be able to use Sambra's repertoire. And our repertoire, I'm talking about your music, the artist. So you come to Sambra and you uh, create a profile and membership. And what, we, what you do when you sign a deal of assignment, you are basically giving us the right to protect your music in a public space and make sure that you get paid for it for whatever it plays in a public space, as I've said. So yeah, so that's what we basically do at Samro. And we actually have two primary distributions a year, which is the radio in general. Radio, and by general, I mean like when it plays in airplanes or yeah, airports, anywhere. That's the, that would fall under general. And then we have a TV distribution for if your music is to be used in like a uh, programs, is it the more generations? We also administer those rights because it's on a public space, public platform. So then we are the ones who make sure that the artist of the certain song gets paid and if they have a publisher, so does the publisher, depending on the contracts that you have with your publisher. Just to keep it brief. But if you have any more questions about Sandra, I'll be there at the back and we all the pamphlets that have all the information regarding application. We have online application forms. This pamphlet that I have will have also a Sambra website and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Andy Leve, for that information. As you heard, he is at the back. He will be taking your questions and then the forms as well for more information on that. Okay, so our theme for today is rebuilding the Houting creative sector, positioning of brand Houting to the world. On my panel this afternoon, I have uh, Mr. Mtuduzi Matsani, who is a ceramic artist. Uh, good afternoon. And I also have Nshamulo Nota Baloi, a uh, record industry executive. Um, I also have uh, Osnik Munewe, who is a museum archivist, uh, festival promoting awards, uh, hip hop awards um, founder who's a human being. He says I'm a human being. Okay. Um, he's also joining me. And I also have Mpo um, Makua who is a fashion creative, a festival promoter, and a hmm, young, upcoming Soweto music talent um, fi finder, yeah, and promoter. Yes, all of that in one. And I also have Gitumetsi. Lebaka, who's the acting CEO of Houting Film Commission. That's my panel, and the MEC is there. So, guys, me and uh, Podium are not friends, eh? Firstly, I'm short, and secondly, I always think they stand in the way. Um, I have two microphones there for you guys. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Mpo. Yeah, that was a quick, lovely. So, I met Mpo today by the way. Um, and then I, I like meeting new people, I like meeting young people especially. especially. So he told me about the work that he does, he's part of um, the Soweto Youth Festival, part of the, um, don't whisper, because now you're scaring me. 
Uh, he is um, part of uh, Escorts, that's their website, apparel, uh, that speaks to fashion and street culture. And he is also part of the Soweto Music Academy, um, which if Ulandela Umlando with piano, uh, you'll find that some of the originators of the sound uh, were incubated in the work that um, Soweto Music Academy does. Um, and um, so I thought any sort of shop um, for the apparel out at Zone 6 in the Deep Clue. So I know these other ones, except you. So I know that he's in the Tasha all the time, four days a week or so. So talk to me about being a Sowetan in this youth month when we say we have to rebuild the housing creative sector and position it um, for the world. What does that say to you? <laughs> yeah. Hello? Hello? Come on. Sabonani. So what it means for me basically, it generally means that we just have to rewrite the, the creative narrative on how things should be done. You know, um, things have been happening for the longest time. Like one of my biggest goals is to see a lot of alcohol free festivals. I mean, because festivals bring out a lot of information to the people. They connect communities, they unite people. It's a good networking space for for for, for upcoming talents that want to ex get exposed to 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 basically extraordinary stuff. My brother Osmik does uh, Back to the City. I'll reference that throughout. Sure. So for me, it's bigger than just existing. In the township, a lot of things are very hard for us because most of these things are out of our space. And townships are always considered as places of hell, I can put it, because nothing really they come and say, yo, I'll do this and this and this for you guys, but it really never happens. You can see with infrastructure that we have in the communities, your sports fields, they've been turned into, I don't know, smoking pockets for people. You know, and I personally believe that it's a knock on effect from the top. You know, and everyone's dream is to make it out of the hood. You know, and who are we leaving in the township? Who are we leaving to inspire people on the township? Instagram is not going to do that for us. You know, a Facebook, all these social media platforms, not everyone is really connected like that. Even though I have my brother speaking about putting everything online, not everyone can access online information. And what are, what are these organizations doing to make sure that everyone is informed about this is where you can get what we want to get? You know, and it's been one of the biggest concerns for me as a role player in the creative industry, not just in the fashion world, but in, in a space where I consider myself a full-on creative and I'm using, it's like in school. When we went to high school, we used to do like nine subjects. Like nine subjects, imagine nine. And as you grow up, because of responsibilities, you're down, down to do like one thing. But for me, it's always been that nine subject mentality. You know, as I'm teaching myself how to adapt in different industries, and kind of like use that insight from each and every industry to come up with a general plan that can work for everybody. And that's evident through the work we do with the festival, the Sorry Festival. We are basically using that platform to kind of like gain out information as much as possible to the people that are surrounding us, especially in the township. Never heard of a festival that has alcohol free in the township. You know, if there's a festival in the township, maybe pools, we are going on this giant, you know what I'm saying? If I'm gonna preach that to someone in the world walking around, say, yo, come do to Sawyer Festival, this is what it's all about, there's no alcohol, they're just like, mm. you know, but seeing those numbers come in indicates progress, you know, and you know in sober spaces a lot of things can happen. You know, and for me, that's I think that's the that's where the conversation is to start. Like sober up the people, you know, because when we turn up, we just tend to lie a lot more than anything. <laughs> Stuff that I'm, I take my number, 
Hit you up tomorrow, connect, but you know, tomorrow boots in and climb in the middle. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's all about that, but I'll go deeper into it as the conversation I'll place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, that is in Po Makua. So I'm going to move on to Nota. Uh, Nota, you in the, the creative space and the roles that you play, uh, when we talk about rebuilding the Gauteng creative sector, positioning of the brand Gauteng to the world, um, based on the work that you do, and you can share with us what work you do, um, how can we go about achieving that? And what are the things that could be holding us back uh, or not allowing us to actually be able to do this? Um, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I think the most important thing that we need to start doing is stop caring what people think. I want Buzz with Caesar mentality is really stopping a lot of creatives from getting their work out there. A lot of you are sitting with hard drives full of the greatest music that we've never heard. Let me repeat that. A lot of you are sitting out there with hard drives full of the greatest music we've, uh, we've never heard. A lot of you are sitting with books, with designs that you've scribbled out, pages that you've torn apart that we've never seen and that will never see the light of day because there isn't enough encouragement for people to fail forward. People are too interested in being perfect. People are too interested in being refined. And when it comes to art, it's not about perfection. It's not about refinement. One of the greatest artists in the world is a thief. He stole our art from Africa. His name is Pablo Picasso. Because he could see what we couldn't see in ourselves, he is now known as the greatest artist in the world. He came to Africa, he saw the ornaments, he saw the masks that they were making, the faces, and then he took it to Europe, and then he called it abstract art. But the truth is that it was African traditional art. And us as Africans, we didn't see it as art. We saw it as something that we do. When I was still a small boy, in Soweto, when I still lived here, maybe up until I was three years old, one of my greatest ambitions was to be able to make a wire car. I left Soweto before I could turn like five or six or seven, where the other boys were making wire cars. Today when I come back to Soweto, there isn't one boy that can make a wire car. Not one. Because we stopped believing in what we have. We stopped taking what we have and using what we have to make something great. Because we thought, ah, I'm a positive. Already they got remote control cars. I'm a solution. They won't even think about this thing. So one of the greatest ways to rebuild what this housing, um, a cultural community can contribute to the world is starting by believing in what we already have and believing in our own greatness and also allowing ourselves to fail. You can walk into a room and have everybody laugh at you and you can laugh along with them. Or you can walk into a room and have everybody laugh at you and run out of that room and never be seen in public again. It's the difference in mentality. You understand what I'm saying? So the little that we have brings a lot of joy and a lot of beauty to the rest of the world. We've already seen, it's been proven. The kids in South Africa, you give them this app called TikTok, and they can do more with that app than kids in China can do where it was invented. They can do more with that app than kids in the United States of America can do where they've been using it for three years before we did. They took that app called TikTok, and they got over two billion views of their dance moves. Why? Because there's greatness within everything that we do. It's so simple, it comes naturally to us. We overlook it all the time. But that is the beauty that we can contribute to the world. And we can present ourselves to the world as we are. We don't need to lie to the rest of the world. We don't need to conceal who we are. We don't need to dress in Gucci, Versace, and adapt ourselves to this Western culture, which steals from us and then presents it as a fine art. We are a fine art. We are what Pablo Picasso was drawing. We are the Mona Lisa's in the Louvre. Right here in Soweto. Right here in City Bay. So it starts with us rebuilding our self-image. It starts with us looking at ourselves. 
as the diamonds, as the gems. I think that's one of the ways that we can rebuild uh, our creative economy and our cultural economy. We are supposed to colonize the world with our culture. That's what we are supposed to do. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Mtuduzu Matsani, who is a ceramist, uh, to talk to us in regards to that. You work with your hands uh, as a ceramist. You can tell us exactly how you do the work that you do and how can we go about uh, rebuilding the health and creative sector and positioning it as a brand that we can take to the world through your work. Um, from my side, um, what I can actually say in terms of the creative industry, I think the first thing is that uh, we need to have the support from the local communities. That's where it actually starts. Um, so we see these other brands that are coming out from the townships that are actually going international. Um, I think that's the first thing that should be important, is that we should have the community backing our artists, backing us, and as well as uh, the Department of Sports and Arts and Culture. I think they need to have a sit down with the Department of Education, because these things have been, thank you, um, uh, the, the, this department, in terms of, it starts at the root level, at schools. I mean, growing up, I, I, didn't, I grew up in between as a millennial, in between the technology and the old school. One of the things that are not there, um, like Nota was talking about making wire cars. I mean, we grew up having the handwork, you know, agricultural studies, all those things have disappeared. Kids go out of class and then that's it, they go back home. There's no more choirs, there's no more development in terms of such things. I think for us to position ourselves, the, the Department of Sports and Arts and Culture needs to talk to the Department of Education and say, how can they help each other in, in the space of developing these things? From a young age, and once we grow up with these things, like kids in China grow up with technology, it's easier for them to develop an app because they start at a primary school level. We have to get to university for you to, in order to be to start operating a laptop. I think that's also one of the most important things that I think we should focus on. Um, I can't say much because I think everybody has touched on how we can actually go the sector. Thank you. So, um. I think you can also just speak to a space of the work that you do and how that contributes to that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, also, in terms of what I was talking about, um, I'm a ceramicist. I'm a ceramist. I, that. I use the cyst for emphasis. Sorry, pardon me. Um, I'm a ceramist. Um, I am from... Um, we're running uh, what we call Afripot um, Eco. It's a ceramic manufacturing company. Uh, where we buy, we have about 60 employees. We are we are looking at growing to. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There. Okay. Um, we we have a 14,000 square meter factory in Mabele, whereby we we employ about um, 60 people. Uh, as soon as we start operations, we're looking at growing to at least 120 employees. But what's important in terms of the art and culture, we went out to schools and started teaching kids how to use the clay soil, Ubuma. And then start develop. some of the kids who have matriculated that we started young are actually doing designs for our own castles, our own tableware, and that's where we actually did play a part because art actually plays a huge part in terms of the work that I do, in terms of where the commission, we have to be able to sketch it, draw it, and then mold it, and from there put it into design. And once the design is done, then you can put it into the production line. And once it's in the production line, can be in every household from Montana Okuma SOA to Art Design, the commission to be or was in a pattern at Lugile, and then from Lapo, it could be in every household from here, like us. We've got uh, Brazil, Spain, and um, what you call the US, whereby they want an African themed table. They don't want the usual made in China, they want it to be fully themed and as African, and the demand is high. So we find beauty. We only have Abu Mama, Esther, Matlam, who we can look up to. We don't have, you know, young and up pattern designers, people who can draw, people who can sketch. They don't take that as something that could be of a major career path. I mean, a company like Italo Tiles, for you to design the tiles, you have to have an arts background. For you to do those patterns, our tiles was going into. Somebody had to sit down and literally draw those patterns, and then they get screened, and then 
be from there, then they must produce. Thank you. Wow. Shucks, man, you know. I am not sure if you are a good person. I am not sure if you are a good person. I am not sure if you are a good person. I am not sure if you are a good person. I am not sure if you are a good person. I am not sure if you are a good person. Yes, when the soil is soft. No, guys, it's not my fault that you guys are not a relative of my rurals. I am not now. And also, even being work, the kids, you could you learn it as a child. And that's art and culture. And it connects to what Nota was saying because it was natural. And it's what was happening. We didn't see it as as this big thing that you can take to the world. Hey, that seems a weird idea. Means a boomba. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So we move on to um, our next uh, panelist. So I'm going to ask uh, Miss Kitube Silivaga to come to talk to us about um, her role as acting CEO of Houghton Film Commission and how, uh, through you know visual art, we can be able to. Uh, contribute to this thing, rebuilding the housing creative sector, positioning of brand housing to, to the world. It's up to you, ma'am. Right. Uh, Tumela? Hello. Great. My name is Kitume Zelebaga. I am the acting CEO Yeah, the Houghton Film Commission. And we are based in the 6th Street downtown. And we really believe that the audiovisual industry, the film industry, the TV industry in Gauteng has the potential of being a billion rand industry. And you, you normally, when we talk about industries that are bringing great contribution in the GDP, we look into more the hardcore industries. And we believe that if we work together with private sector, if we work together and increase the funding pot with Film Law, we are able to bring great investment into the country. When you talk with any young, upcoming, budding filmmaker, the greatest need is funding. And as the GFC, we're very deliberate about growing the funding part of the housing by partnering with funding institutions. But we're not only leaving it there. We've taken a deliberate decision as a Houghton Film Commission to build what we call a Houghton Film Fund. The Houghton Film Fund will be a pot where creatives can come in, be able to say, here is the fund that I can use as a startup to my movie, my uh, documentary. And you find that more and more creatives have great moves, great concepts, but they are unable to leave their shelves, their great scripts, but they are not being turned into the productions. And we believe that with the type of film and the right content, that as it international circuit, this is the first opportunity of creating and building and also creating more opportunities for the youth, for all the budding and up and coming, and even more experienced production companies. We have seen, and, and, and it is very impressive, in the last few weeks and months, we've seen films like Tando, films like Gidiboni, films like uh, Majori, these films have been competing on international stage. And these African, South African films from Gauteng have been able to get international awards. This says something. And what it is saying is that there is great talent in Gauteng. 
Kaute. There is great talent in Soweto. Sitting there, there is great content that is able to take the industry forward. I normally say that as a Gauteng Film Commission and Gauteng as a province, it is a gateway, not only to Africa, but globally. And as a GFC, we have taken a deliberate stance on investing in products that come out of the country. We have, and we are doing it in this uh, financial year, in the past, our focus was to say, how do we enable production companies have the right equipment? Now we understand that they've got the correct startup equipment, the laptops are there, the lighting is there, you know. But we have now taken it a step forward to say, how do we increase the quality of production that are shot there? And we know that when we talk about quality, we're now looking into issues of prose production. And we have taken a deliberate stand to say, with our enterprise development, we are now issuing out drones that will help get great angles and qualities. We are now investing in softwares that will enable that our productions are able to compete with the best in the world. We are doing this because we understand that there is great talent that exists in Gaudi. More than that, you will start seeing from the coming weeks when we issue out an RFI, which is a request for information. We have taken a deliberate stand as a Gaudi Film Commission to say we need to have studios right here in Gauteng. Studios that will enable a, a young black South African to shoot quality productions. We know with these studios that they will attract investment in the country. And you will understand when you study the industry that there are not enough studios in the world. And with these studios, we know for sure that Gauteng will be put on the map, the talent we have will be put on the map, the content that is sitting in shelves, in laptops, will then get an opportunity to be put out there. We believe in the content that is there in Gauteng. We believe in the quality that is there. And we are investing in the marketing distribution. We are investing and working together with private government and public sector as a whole in increasing the industry. I hope any that I have in more than one way expanded on the topic of the day. Most definitely. Thank you so much uh, for, for that. I think what you were able to do uh, is articulate uh, what um, the Film Commission does in carrying the messaging that speaks to what we are discussing here today and how they can use uh, what you guys have on offer to actually take the message to, to, to the world. Uh, I think it connects to what Nota was talking about. Um, you know, the Chinese kids who uh, have TikTok that came out of their country, Americans had it first, but they didn't have a compelling story. Um, and I think uh, that's what everybody has been speaking to, is that, uh, your story is what will take this province to the world, but you will need the platforms uh, to be able to take it to the world. It's not that complicated, but it's complicated. I mean, it's, right? Okay, so um, he's been sketching the whole time since we've been talking, because I guess he's an artist like that. So, Osmik, uh, Yo, 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 one, two, one, two, what's up? You woke up. Yeah, 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 what's up? So, Osmik is uh, the godfather of hip hop. Oh, yeah, you know, he archives it. What's, what's that? Oh, it's not his name. Oh, wow. That could be on a t shirt. Yes. You should have done mine. 
With some bro, with my royalties here. <laughs> <laughs> and SARS to register there. So talk to me about, uh, you know, your contribution to the creative arts and the work that you do and how you think with that, we can be able to rebuild the Gauteng creative sector and positioning it, uh, you know, as a brand that we can take to the world. I think the most important thing that we sitting under this tent need to realize is that the black renaissance is period is here, right? I think um, people are not seeing it, maybe because we're living in it, but this is a black renaissance because if you look at what's happening globally, um, the world is feeling for this thing called Africa, you know? Um, you know, it's, it was not by design, it was not by mistake or by design when, you know, Beyonce did that whole black is king and, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you look at, for instance, a lot of our artists, like how when Gong came out, it was the biggest thing in Europe. Um, you look at, um, with on my piano right now, it's, it's, it's a big thing in the States. Um, and you then also realize that when we start saying creative sector, when we say the connecting place, if you think about it, this is this province. We were talking just earlier with Nata how there was an era where every like Angolian and Nigerian artist, all of them shot their music videos in Utah, yeah. right? Um, and when we say Nigerian artists, we're talking about a guy who just filled up stadiums in London, which is Bernard Boy, yeah. right? For him to end up in that, you know, he needed to come here and use our infrastructures, right? Because when you're in this province, you must realize that um, if coming from someone like, for instance, uh, um, uh, with what I do, and I also don't know if you guys know this, but Johannesburg is the only place in the world where a black person is most likely to, to make it. I don't know if you're aware of that. Like, a lot of people don't know that. So Johannesburg specifically, right, is the only place where a black person is most likely to make it. But it makes sense, you know why? Because all the infrastructures are here, right? Um, you look at brands, like all the headquarters, they're here. Um, we were speaking earlier with Norton, and he was asking me about other provinces. Like, I'm not too sure if you've ever seen any other province where we have the MEC of Arts and Culture, and you've got the, the director, and then you've got the you know, CEO of the Film Commission, I'm not too sure, but I don't know if you've uh, seen in any other problems. Uh, I doubt it. So, because there's a design here where, you know, things are there for you, like Sambro is here, um, um, you know, uh, uh, Risa is here. So all these things that I think you as a creator uh, I need, if you want to do a proposal, then you want to do a festival, you want to do a tour, so forth and so on. All these infrastructures are here because when you come from outside of Gauteng, you literally have to, you know, bus your way here or taxi your way here or fly here um, to use these resources that we have here. So I think it's most important for, for, for being, I think, here to understand what it actually means and, you know, all these things that available for you because I tend to see a lot of people complaining saying yeah but you know no one is doing this for me or no one is doing that for you until one day you realize that everything you need is like right next to you you know because people always say yeah but you know how did you get you know Sprite I'm like well I took a taxi up the road to Rosebank <laughs> they were like right across the mall you know what I mean so, so I think it's important for, for I think us in the creative because also um, we tend to 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 sort of whine a lot as well about um, you know a handout because I think us as as creators we, we would we never had the handout mentality you know and I'm not too sure when it started but I think um, when someone leaves that handout mentality and starts like hustling like not you know people always ask me for instance with um, with Back to the City on how come we have so many sponsors and I talk and I tell them that I literally send out 60 proposals like 60 proposals and out of 60 proposals I usually get 7 and 
that's every year for 15 years with 25,000 people, you know? So I think it's important to go back to, to realizing effort, you know, to also understanding that you're in a place where, because if you try and make it out in New York, good luck. If you try and make it out in LA, good luck. If you try and make it out in China, good luck. Um, but if you use your, 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 your infrastructure, all these things that are here for you, and then you go and knock at those places, you already have an up on them. You must understand that in the States, you, there's no like artist department of arts and culture. There's no such a thing in America like that, right? There's not, you know? So, which you need to start thinking now, actually like, hmm, we have it here. And it's like up your road, <laughs> worst of all, you know? Um, so I think it's time for, I think, us start understanding these things that are available to us. And not, you know, don't sit there, don't sit there and, you know, send a, you know, a tweet and a Facebook and say, ah, but you're not doing X, Y, and Z, you know. Take the cat and go not, you know. So, I hope I didn't go left. <laughs> wow. Awesome. You dropped some balls. <laughs> well, um, I think, um, you know, with that said, so I'm going to... Um, take this opportunity and just uh, throw my two cents of worth uh, because ultimately uh, the commitment is, is on us as the individual and I like what you said. So I have been in the creative industry for the last 28 years. Um, yeah, yeah, that's as long as, I don't know, not has been alive or Mpo has been alive. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're all my little brothers here. Uh, a part of a generation of young people who got on community radio before we even got youth commercial stations. So I'm a pioneer in so many ways. I'm actually getting to a place where I need to start talking like that. Like I know GFC, when it was um, not even the film commission, it wasn't in the film office. We used to go every Friday to go watch movies at Stekiniko. Uh, they had a name for it, and then the first movie they sh we shot was it was Jack the Gun. Baby Taylor was in it, and they had funded that, and we had never had of government funding a movie. So, so MEC, I'm telling you that because as Gauteng, Gauteng, sometimes we forget that, but mostly as South Africa, um, that like I think Osnick hit that nerve to say, yeah, you drive up to places. Like I was saying to Paul that just. Drop me a WhatsApp or, or DM. You want an interview? We put it. We put. That's what you do. That's what for me. What media work for me is. Like I don't understand people who are on radio or in media who don't tell me about new things. I get confused if I'm listening to you. I'm hearing old stuff. I'm like, why am I hearing about Noda? I've heard about Noda. I want to hear about. Him. I just met him today. The guy who does ceramic. Somebody needs to know. Cause that's what. Also, the connection is that. You know, I know Shane when he was still trying to act. Where is he? Pure. <laughs> Yeah, when he was saying, hello and welcome to my map, Lina Kinna Shane my map. And I was like, oh, this guy, Ulela Spade, I can do that better too. Do you know what I mean? So all of those things is like, what does the policy of government do? But what is our active role as citizens to be able to access and showcase the gifts that we have? He's, they're, they're right. In New York, there's, there's no department of arts and culture. Actually, this morning I was on the phone with Musito. Do you guys know who Musito is? No. Well, you do. But these are the kind of things that we need to start seeing. Kids need to know that the Deputy Marketing Director of Meta Facebook is a South African. Yes! That's the stuff you need to know. You need to know that. And, and that's who we are in the world. And he was with Jerry, who used to be the head of marketing at SABC, who is the head of tourism in New York. And I met them through this work. So even if you are on radio or you are a writer or you're a buddy, if you don't get yourself informed, you always feel left out. Do you know what I'm saying? But most importantly, if you're in a position and you're not responsible about disseminating the information, to those who might need to know about the work that you do, like this gentleman here from SARS, he could be at home chilling on Saturday, but he came to tell us what SARS does. That's out of respecting us and the work that he does. 
So I think that handout thing that you spoke about, you also spoke about that when we were talking about how we used to just do things for ourselves. And now we've lost that. And as creatives, we're not going to create if we don't get up and do it. They can, GFC can say they have a fund, but if you have nothing to offer, there will be no full. Is that sweet? Hmm, there will be. Anyway, so, in, uh, yeah, I don't want to stand between lunch and stuff, and because we started late. So what I want to know is, do you guys have questions on the ground that you want to ask based on the roles and the things that these people do here? Um, and how you can turn your story into a blockbuster or your idea into a big festival? Yes, sir. Yeah, these ones here. You young ones, I want lots of questions here. <laughs> yes, sir. How's my God? Okay, how's my God? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to come on Sunday then. No, man, I just have a, a few pointers directed to um, the acting CEO of the Film Commission. Um, look, I have a suggestion. Anyone who has a child at home, I think we all know that children enjoy watching a lot of television. So usually whenever we talk about film content, we think movies. But we never focus or emphasize a lot on educational content. Can't you take that textbook, that normal textbook as a primary school, and convert that into a film? I think that children will learn better. Because they're doing what they love anyway. I thought it happened with TV. Right? So that's the first suggestion. Can we not therefore take this content that is distributed all over in the form of textbooks and convert that into short films, whether it's about animals, whether it's about men, anything that a child wants to learn, that's the first thing. So it's how we usually pioneer such things, so that's a suggestion. I wouldn't say I'm can I copyright that idea? How? <laughs> I'm thinking you would say you already have the proposal. <laughs> and then also, um, I want to emphasize on the fact that I think there is not enough films being produced. Uh, if you can compare us to uh, what they call Hollywood, if you can make a comparison, I think they still have numbers in terms of the production. And you know why? They don't emphasize on this thing that we love to emphasize on. We are too obsessed about quality, funding this, funding that, funding this, funding that. Mm -hmm. But if you can walk into any household now, the lowest budget films, but now we get a bit too bad, I'm a manager. Who's a trolling us? Why? Because the stories that have been told are addictive. It's about the story, guys. Right? So if you have a small camera like this one, just shoot, start and do it. Yes. Want, exactly, <laughs> if you have your phone. And then the last part that I want to uh, focus on is that I think, I think, uh, how in particularly here in Johannesburg, we can actually be the Hollywood of the continent. I don't think we're taking full advantage of that. And the reason why I'm saying that is, um, the acting CEO did mention which we need to build studios. You understand? And I, for one, strongly feel with a movie like the Black Panther should have actually come out of Africa itself. They made it Pumela. A movie like Black Panther. They made it Pumela. That's what I strongly feel with it. I think we lost an opportunity. They were supposed to be having a Marvel studio somewhere in Utah, I believe. So with that, what you said, uh, CEO, can you not just say it, but can you work on having those studios? I'm talking big studios. What about Atlas? Bigger ones. So those are my submissions. Thank you. Lies. Salam um, alaikum. Uh, now I'll introduce myself. Yeah? Yeah, my name is Mzato. Yeah, I just happened to be an artist, uh, a, a musical theatre artist. Yeah, well, now. Also, it, it has, just so it happens, which is um, my theater field, I want to learn art. In uh, South Africa, we're not taking it uh, seriously. I want, and when we find, when we go overseas, like, we teach our universities, and they take you know, our, our art form. I want to buy theater seriously. In such a way, which is it, it's part of curriculum and going on. By, by so saying, I mean, our own, our campus dance. I want to campus dance lesson, I fool in the air, but I'm not going to say 
In fact, in America, they've changed it to stomp. We understand that. Oh, stepping, yeah, well, they, they're doing feelings now, you know. I'm, I'm teaching when I come to city schools, and I find I'm not getting enough support because what really happens is you find a team, we're getting to our festivals just that now, it's to, it's to look COVID. Uma festivals, Sadis, Uma festivals, I'm in overseas. Whereas this art form, we can take so many people around Lai Soweto and teach them to teach campus overseas because in, in Canada, in Australia, and some other countries overseas is already curriculum, but here in the country, I agree already, and people just don't even know, and our kids, our parents don't know to exist. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is, um, it's, it's time now to uh, I must position our brand. Um, the position the brand here, how things to the world. My main plan is that he puts it. It's out of choice. It's about the one that was there. And my guy, then they came to settle in Jersey and look for work, and they found a rhythm out of that. He then said, "So I imagine that can be attached to so many things." When we find Gucci, I'm a, I'm a companies they use that too much in building. I find so many white companies once again, but okay, right? And we want a team building, yeah, inputs, or the sense of my into tourism as as was well, and my entertainment. But now, what I find is. There's not much support. The art from Lena and Hata exist, whereas we find so many people overseas who want to come and, and learn it, whereas Lana is not promoted. Now, my feel is if you want to go forward, let's go back a bit. Because yeah, some of these things, they can live and teach their work. Yeah, and the equal is existing, but it's just that you know, we don't have support. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Uh, we take another. Yeah, I'm Shailene Zandla, guys. Passion is very important. There's a hand, right? Or a, okay. So I see this hand and I see that hand, guys. So I've been given strict instruction. So there's one, two, three are the ones that I'm seeing. And let's agree. Can we close after that? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, because, I, yeah. So one, those three, uh, except if the young people have a question, the children. I'll always make an exception for them. Then I'll get my panelists to close. Okay? What's up? Yeah, a lady will also help. Yeah, the silence is too much. We love you, Allah. Like it's gender equality, Nina and Tuli. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Monono uh, Mabusel. I'm from uh, Villa Gazi Street. Uh, there's a radio station called the Box Shop Online Radio, and uh, I also represent. Uh, a startup called Stake Up. We are a creative enterprise, and uh, I also represent Matekwane Asoweto. So we are, we are part of uh, opening the cannabis industry, but in terms of education, health, and just taking the industry forward. So my question was directed uh, to the MEC. We have a program. We've got programs that we want to do. For example, uh, we are currently hosting the Soweto 710 Cannabis Festival, which is uh, from the 8th till the 10th of July at Chapwazi. Everyone is invited. Where, where, where we want to then become a bridge. You know, a lot of artists do, uh, I would say, informally uh, ingest or take. Uh, the cannabis plant for inspiration and so forth. And there's so many uh, wonderful um, uh, health benefits, right? For example, artists go through depression, they go through stresses and stuff. There's actually medical, um, illegal cannabis that they can also uh, partake of. But my question is, especially for creative practitioners in Soweto, because we, uh, we form part of the constituency of the youth, here, yeah, right? So the problem is access, right? Yes, we do uh, find that these programs do come to uh, our townships and so forth. You know, they're great. I mean, I heard from the film commission, they're doing amazing things. But for uh, creative practitioners like us, like for example, we have a festival that's happening in a month set. Uh, we're talking about unlocking the Gauteng brand and stuff to the world and so forth. How, how does the Gauteng province align to the youth? And where can we get um, information? Like for example, Soweto is so huge that not everyone uh, can get to Rosebank because not every child who's a creative can even afford a taxi ride. Do you understand? 
to those to those offices. So how is the government then mitigating that? And what are the the funding models? And where can we uh, speak to the relevant people for us to get support in terms of infrastructure development and also just uh, general uh, assistance, so that we can have uh, more permanent instead of just a one-off collaboration with government moving forward and also unlocking the economy for creative practitioners. Thank you. Great stuff. Um, so I'm sure you, you're going to respond at the, at the end. Okay, so my last, uh, Nizela City shortened the question. Eh? Yes, 12. Okay, there. Yes, sir, go ahead. I am particularly the the only pro in terms from was with me now, as a county province, what have you guys done to bring back is this thing about Mizoro? You know, my primary school is called Asia Mizoro, that's when it's a called skill this thing. So suddenly, it all this, now they decided to get rid of them, understand? And that is why, obviously, moving forward, Kuzoba Nelek is into all this thing is key. Manji, back my Wabana something. So that one can realize and acknowledge a talent that I came from a younger age. Then, the master is a good feeling for me. I'm concerned about most academies where you go to school, you invest your time, scale, you learn in a film and drama studies. Then, once you've gone from school, you come and you're thinking that the province or even the department itself. Is on Tata Ekwini against the young kid, like compared to like your Western province where they've got, especially a Cape Town, they've got impacting the city, Katikasi. I'm interested in the site specific theatre, but then this side, like who do you talk to? Because Mokalo Kumangete journalists, they seem not to be willing to put it. Baglale and Babos. And I heard you mentioning this to Zabuti, we're talking about economics. So as Film Commission, okay, Mokalo Kumangete. Is it about the quantity or about the quality of work? Because recently, the content that uh, 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 a TV or from Kuma Films, it seems like it, day by day our film industry is getting darker. Like even our theater space is getting darker. It seems like the more a, a, a black person is being compromised, that is content, and, and, and that is a commodity. And that becomes a worry to some of us. Then the, the last one, the issue of Abu Grams Town and so forth. Imalia Puma. Then I was. Then I'm concerned about the talent that uh, uh, they are constantly in rehearsal spaces, but they don't even know if from a, a department. And these guys, when they get to Gramstown, the Paramis Economy, Eastern Cape, when they get that site, then we direct, we direct, we direct, we go to society. Then what exactly are we doing? Mm. Done. Thank you. Uh, lady at the back, and then I'm wrapping up with the children. Thank you. Ah, and you, my brother. So, Rastane, Askis, the Kupala Tsarela is Niki Saugu. Show sisters. Poet, uh, poet collection, uh, commando department of education. 
Mfunguazo, how can they transform it into a film uh, talking about the content? Mfunguazo, my genre does they select a specific genre because now my concern is poetry as content writing or audio. I feel like it's being deprived. Now my radio is not uh, exposed as other genres. So in Pumugas, maybe is it us who have to break the wall or is it still in a pipeline or how do you work, uh, guys work? Thank you. Dan Gomez, thank you. Uh, these children of mine have submitted their questions in writing. Very committed. Lindo Kuchemanzi asks, how do you get work as an artist? Dombi Futis Tola asks, how do policies assist young aspiring artists? Pali San Romalo asks, how do I become an actress? Those are my children. Now, the panel can respond to any of the questions that was asked, but we can start with the MEC. Yeah. So Uprimi, I'm very interested in this sector. Um, and, uh, and a lot of people get shocked about that. But in our own studies that the Department of Economic Development has done, is that this is a huge growth point for us. And we really want to focus on it um, as the province. And there's a lot of work that's being done. So I will ask that the guys that are our scribes here must take your details so that we're able to connect you with on the initiatives they've got in growing the cannabis industry and so forth, because it is massive. And what you also speak to is that, you know, the I remember when we were doing the Silapa program with the minister. Part of the things we don't talk about or have not really got into focus into is some of the habits that the industry forces individuals. Well, maybe let me not say forces. But some of the, the habits that the industry makes it for people to get into. I'll say that if you look at the Mabiano cats, right? So these are artists, and we know that artists make a lot of money from performances. So it's not necessarily selling their records and so forth. They're making a lot more out of performances. But what does that do? What is the ripple effect of that? Is that a person is on the road consistently. And when they get onto a stage, they have to be at their top performance, right? They need to be as energetic, they can't be looking like they're tired and whatnot. And what do they then do? Because your body cannot keep up, some of them end up getting into substances. And they become addicted and hooked onto that. And I'm saying it's something that, yes, as we, we may look at it and say, no, but they mismanage their time better and whatnot. But unfortunately, because the industry is structured in such a manner that you're happening now and you want to maximize on that as much as you possibly can, but it's humanly impossible for your body to be able to sustain it and sustain those levels and so forth. So issues like your cannabis, drug abuse, and whatever other recreational things that individuals get into, it's something we need to look into and say, what are the cleaner substances or cleaner ways that people can be able to maintain themselves without falling into the trap of wanting to do so much and end up compromising yourself and your health in the end. Because that's why you'll get your increase in your drug and alcohol intake, your increases in the road accidents that would be there and so forth and so forth. So I think it's an avenue that you spoke to, but we need to find ways. And people can take cannabis because they do for medical reasons. But what we need to do is to avoid those that end up becoming having health problems. But there are ways that it can be utilized in a way that it becomes healthy and assists and aids the body. And I think that's something that we need to look into. So there's a lot of opportunity in the cannabis industry and the medical benefits that it would have. And I think if we're able to study it a bit more, we can find something that is sustainable that can help even artists to be able to perform at their maximum without compromising. So that it helps them because we do know a lot of people 
I mean, all of us know a person or two who utilizes it, and unfortunately, because you're not educated on the substance itself, it then can take you to another route. So that's the one that we want to take your contact because I think there's, um, you're young and you're from a soil to almost be able to help you. So on the issue, someone was saying, how are we bringing back sports and arts? I mean, you spoke about the ghetto, um, indigenous games that are take place. Um, but I must indicate, I mean, in the different games that we participate in, the Popo is doing exceptionally well on indigenous games, naturally. Um, so we don't do so well, but we, 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 we trash them in other areas. I mean, in sports, Kauteng is doing exceptionally well on school sports. We're number one and we've been number one for, for many years. And we continue to do exceptionally well. What is the obsession for us? that one, we've got a few schools that do sports and arts in schools. So we want to fix that, we want to value that. And I spoke earlier, which we're bringing a lot of our investment and spend into your, our Nofi schools. Because we know that there's so much talent there. In our Nofi schools, there's a lot of talent, both in arts, in sports, but we want to make sure that Labandwana must be able to have the same opportunities as other people. So I was saying, one of the things that we are doing is that we're bringing back sports and arts in Goldwing. And it's quite intentional because one, we've done, we know the situation of young people. Um, the majority of them, if I back to school, they're involved in drugs and alcohol abuse, they get pregnant early and so forth and so forth. So we want to stop that trend. And we know that you can be able to do that through sports and arts. So we appreciate the developmental role that we must play. But because we are the home of champions, we also appreciate that by bringing in sports and arts at an early age, you're able to identify talent much earlier and you're able to nurture it. So that's important for us because if you look at all the national teams, how thin players are they in, in majority? If PSL is not what it is because of G. It's because it's the PSL and you, we are proud that a lot of the teams that are big, if you think about your top three there from Gauteng, Sundowns, Chiefs, Pirates, and then the others. But the majority in the super sports, the majority of them are coming from here. And we do exceptionally well. But we want to make sure that from an early age, we get Labantuana, because a lot of them, you miss them. So our no fee schools is where we're going to be targeting and we're bringing back the sports and us. It's a huge, huge uh, program. It's going to take a lot of our funds, but we think that we must be we, it's the type of investment that we ought to do. And we don't mind doing it because we think investing in the future is that much more great. So we are bringing it back. Indigenous sports is there. Um, but like I'm saying, we're not doing so well on indigenous sports. Limpopo beats us, but we beat them in all other areas. The only thing, though, is that even though you have a talent in indigenous sport, you're a young person. How do you make sure that we're able to make indigenous sports something that becomes big globally? How do you use technology to make indigenous sport big? So instead of having PlayStations that show karate and whatnot, and we know that karate would come from Asia, etc., why are we not creating apps and things that bring in technology but that speak to indigenous sports? Here's an idea. You can go and implement it and make lots of money, you can just credit me afterwards. <laughs> but I'm saying we must be able to utilize technology to make sure that the things that are here, and there are speakers were talking about that, and saying we've got so much ideas and so many things that get ripped off. Because Abandu Bazala, but that my ideas where to, they see what we do and they maximize it. They, they make sure that it becomes big, they take it internationally and they fine tune it and refine it, but there's all the talent and things that we can be able to do here. So indigenous sport is massive, but how do you make sure that you make it a global entity? How do you make sure that it, it has a global footprint? And how do you use technology within that to make sure that you're able to paint it something that can become big? So think about it. The guy was talking about Amakam Boots. So now it's Natata, your contacts. So Shane, if we can get someone to also take his contacts and see how we integrate them into our Wednesday Leagues program. Because I think it's, it's one of the avenues that we can bring in from an arts point. Um, and then just lastly, um, there were two pointers, and I think both Osmik and Nota spoke to it. So they say, and it's, it's something that we've been speaking to quite a lot, and I think we need to really take this further. That there's a black renaissance 
and that we need to get to a point where the colonized become the colonizers. The cultural revolution is the best way to take over the world. It's already there. People are already coming. They created Black Panther. They created the Lion King, and so forth and so forth. All of these are stories that are ideas born from, this, from the continent. And they become big, and it's individuals that are coming from outside, they make these big, and so forth. We must begin to appreciate that everybody is looking to Africa for new ideas. But we must be able to identify what there is so much that people are taking from us, but we are not taking it and making sure that we're able to economize it in a manner that allows us to take over the rest of the globe. And we can do that, not just the globe, we can do that by making sure that we identify what are the cultural aspects, what are the ideas that we have, and how do we send them out? How do we transfer them to the rest of the world? And we need to get to that point, because all the ideas are here, but it just requires us to have the levels of confidence to take our ideas to the next level. Nigeria is doing exceptionally well. Someone was speaking about, I think Kusanza, you were speaking about the issue of the Nigerians. Men are low-cost movies, but they're big. South African homes sit there, but this is Bugele back to back. And those movies take two hours, because they don't do short stories. But you sit there, you watch, it doesn't matter how crappy the quality may seem, but the story is so good that you sit and you watch it. So Nigeria is beginning to master and appreciate what they can be able to transfer their culture to the world by utilizing their arts, and they're doing it. They do it even with their fashion. So it's not just their local music, uh, music or movies, but even their fashion. People now wear those hats. You all want to dress like a, an ogre and so forth. So, you know, it's terms that we're utilizing. But they know that that's how you transfer your culture. So we must have the confidence as South Africans to do so. And I was saying and making an example earlier, which I'm a piano is doing that, though there's still some confusion in parts of the world because they're not sure, they hear the sound and they think maybe it's coming from Nigeria. They're not quite sure where is it coming from. We must be able to stamp our authority. It's a big sound, let's be able to take it to the rest of the world. And it's not limited to music. There's really other avenues that we can be able to go. And I think we must be able to take the issues of the colonized becoming the next colonizers to the next world. So just a, a last interesting fact as I get off the stage. Yeah. Forbes predicts, they were saying it's, it's, the, industri it's the, the area of those that are within agriculture. But what they're projecting is that the industries of the future or the next set of billionaires are going to be coming from the arts. Why? Because technology now allows us to replicate everything else. The only thing that you're not going to be able to replicate is art. And that's going to be the next original that everybody's going to look out for. So you're in the correct industry. Let's master the space and make sure that you become the next billionaire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, due to time, I really wanted our panelists to respond, but I'm going to be involved in fights about wasting time, and I don't like that. So um, at the back is the team uh, from the department. Uh, if you have a, like, uh, if you want to suggest something and you needed your contacts to be taken or you want to find out more information, there's the guys from Summer there at the back. The gentleman from SARS is still here. Um, and then I've been asked that I can't continue uh, beyond 3 p.m. My name is Peggy Levy. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can DM me directly if you have questions that you need me to pass on. Like I am putting myself Online. Don't stop asking me about houses and struggle bus. <laughs> like, that's my other field. Today I want to talk about. Yes, I am Africa, like South Africa. So we are done. So, the Soweto Film first, uh, Soweto Festival, you can follow all these guys on social media platforms. Nota is the king of Twitter. Osmic is at Museum Africa and Hip Hop. Uh, you are on Inst Twitter, Instagram, right? You are not on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? It's a hip hop. It's a hip hop awards. It's a hip hop awards on Twitter. So, uh, how to film commission on all platforms. The department of uh, sports, arts, culture, and recruitment on Twitter. S G O T underscore Z A on Twitter. Do service on Twitter. So those are just. That's another option to 
nothing on you. Your only problem is that you don't show up as a group. You like showing up as individuals and South Africans. So that's how the world is treating you. ABC, that's the other thing. Nigerians pitch up in their clothes, in their clothes, the hot girl, everything, in the food. And then before you know it, they're taking over. Oh, Tina, Penny alone, you must all watch me. We are done. And that's not going to take us anywhere. We need to change our mindset. Okay.